Hey guys, it's Shira from Watch Out Diaries, and today I want to show you how to build this bookcase. Now, if you saw my last video, you'll know that this is part two of a two-part bookshelf video series. Whenever I decided to build a bookshelf, I actually had two ideas in mind, so I polled the audience to see which one that I should tackle. Surprisingly, it was actually almost a 50-50 split. After getting several messages from people that wanted to see how to build both, I decided to make two videos. I shared the modern open shelf design in the previous video, and in this video, we're going to be tackling the enclosed cabinet style build. So if you're ready to get building part two, let's go. I've got the plans for both bookshelves plus a detailed tutorial on how to build each that I will link in the description below. Now, I will be honest here, I wasn't building a bookshelf for any particular reason. You guys may have heard me mention before that I live in a tiny studio style garage apartment. So I don't really have any room for any more furniture and I didn't really have a customer lined up to buy it once it was built. I just really wanted to make a bookshelf. So instead of making two bookshelves to share two videos, I decided that I would repurpose some of the parts from the open bookshelf to build this one. Please don't hate me, I have a few good reasons for that. One of the reasons why I wanted to take the open bookshelf apart to build the closed style bookshelf was to basically just show you that the two projects are almost exactly the same, except for the side panels. So if you can build one, you can build the other, and honestly, isn't building furniture just building a bunch of boxes and assembling them in different orientations anyway? Plus, if I keep the sides from the open bookshelf, I can basically swap these back out and change this to an open bookshelf someday if I decide, so it's basically like a mix and match modular bookcase at this point. And last but not least, wood is pretty expensive these days, and since I had the bones already here, Reusing them for this project would just allow me to save a little bit of money by not having to buy an extra sheet of plywood. All that said, the first part of this project involved removing the top shelves and side frames from the open bookshelf to prepare for assembling the cabinet style shelf. So we've got the base and the drawer box which can stay together and then we've got the shelves and the top which we can reuse. So really the only thing that we removed from this bookshelf are the sides and I'll just hang on to those for potential future use. Since I am reusing these pieces, I started with the base and the drawer box together. So if I was starting this project from scratch, I would start by assembling the base, which you can see the entire process in more detail in the previous video. But the base of this project consisted of a two x four frame with mid-century modern legs attached at the corners. I just cut these legs out using a jigsaw and attached them using wood glue and screws. Next, I would build the simple plywood box for the drawer to go into, install the drawer slides, and build a drawer to fit into it. If you are building this from scratch, don't worry, I have the full plans linked below with all of the details and dimensions for you to build all of these parts and pieces. Then I would center and attach the drawer box onto the base. Once the base and the drawer box are complete as one piece, I can start building the bookcase cabinet. I pulled out a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood and used my circular saw and Craig AccuCut to cut down two strips to mount on each side of the drawer box at the bottom of the shelf. Once they were ripped, I cut the two pieces to length on the miter saw. Now you could definitely use a circular saw here instead. My miter saw was just barely too small to rip this entire side, so I had to flip it over and cut the rest of it with a second cut. That gives me two sides, but I needed a couple of support pieces also to go at the top of this cabinet to be able to mount the top panel to. So I grabbed a couple thin strips in my scrap pile and cut them to the width of the drawer cabinet box at the bottom of the shelf. I applied edge banding to the edges that will be exposed on the finished piece to give it a cleaner look. Edge banding is always optional, but it really does make the finished project look a lot nicer when working with plywood. 
Once everything was sanded well, I drilled pocket holes into the thin support strips and began staining everything. Now, I could have stained after this was all assembled, but it felt like it was just a little bit easier to go ahead and stain prior to. It doesn't make a difference either way. I removed the drawer so that I could use some wood screws to attach these side panels through the inside of the box. Then I attached the thin strips at the top, one in the front and one in the back. So I pulled out the ladder to install the first one with it standing upright and then I realized that it would probably have been easier to flip it on its side instead so that's what I did for the second one. I flipped it back upright then reattached the top that I had removed from the open bookshelf through these top supports. Now all that's left is adding the back and the shelves. I told you guys that this was a super simple transformation from the open to the closed bookshelf. I cut a piece of quarter inch plywood to use as the back and decided to paint it before attaching it in place. Many of you love the two-tone look on the open bookshelf. I had to agree it did look really good, but this project only had a small touch of black on the base frame. So to add a little bit more, I thought that it would look nice to paint the back panel. While the paint dried, I used a shelf pin jig to drill shelf pin holes along the sides of the cabinet to position the shelves. I used a scrap plywood spacer block clamped on the front edge just to make sure that I had my shelf pin holes on the front side far enough back that the shelves would be able to sit on them. Now, the one downside to reusing the shelves from the other design is that since those were resting on the side frames and these will go into the cabinet, these shelves need to be slightly shorter. So I will have to trim them. That said, if I ever go back to the open design, I will have to cut longer shelves since these won't fit, but I'm okay with that. So I trimmed each shelf down to fit into the cabinet on the shelf pins. Once the paint was dry on the back panel, I stapled it onto the back side of the bookcase. You could definitely route out a rabbit for this to fit down into flush, but I simply stapled it in place. And now I have a cabinet style enclosed bookcase. Now I know for this project I already did some of the more detailed parts like cutting legs for the base and building the drawer box, but that said I do honestly think that this cabinet style design was a little bit easier to build than the open design. However, I'm pretty torn on which one that I like better. If I ever get a real house and have room for both, I'll probably be rebuilding this so that I can actually have both the open and the closed shelves. Until then, I'll just hang on to the pieces so that I'll have them ready. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short series and watching me transform one design into the other. I'll be back soon with more projects and plans, so if you want to follow along to see what's next, I would love if you'd subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!